Albert Ellis was trained by one of Karen Horney's followers, so it is no surprise that he believes we should battle the tyranny of should. According to Ellis, we make ourselves miserable by doing what others think we should do. If we worried less about what others thought, we'd be happier. For Ellis, thinking and happiness go together. How we think impacts how we feel. According to this view, thinking causes emotional consequences. Emotions don't stand by themselves. They are the result of your thinking. The product of your belief system. In Ellis terms, it is as easy as ABC. A is for activating an event. B is believe, and C is consequence. Something happens, a sound in an adjacent room perhaps. You think about that stimulus. And what you think determines your emotional consequence. If you believe there's a burglar in the other room, you feel fear. If you believe there's a party you're not invited to, you feel envy. If you believe your sound was caused by your visiting Aunt Betty, you're happy that you can now have that chat you've been wanting. Ellis originally called his approach rational psychotherapy. The emphasis was on rational thought. Think of it as, as having Socrates or Aristotle in your head. Thoughts should progress reasonably, rationally. They should be consistent and well-managed. Or think of it as applying the scientific method to everyday life. You should experience life, all existentialism, but avoid irrational thinking. If emotional distress is caused by irrational thinking, the cure is to confront people with their irrational beliefs. Alice is much more in-your-face than Rogers or traditional counseling. He doesn't avoid confrontation, but seems to thrive on it. Although some clients may feel pushed by confrontation, they also seem to appreciate that therapy is moving along. You might be offended by what the therapist says, but at least you know they're doing something. Although described as others as a cognitive behavioral theory, Ellis just means thinking. His theory is essentially a self-talk theory. What you say to yourself, your internal speech, is critical to your personal well-being. Ellis would agree that people are constructivists in a philosophical sense. We actively create our own worldview, constructing it out of our thoughts and ideas. We are creative problem solvers. But Ellis also holds that we are destructivists. We are the primary cause of our misery. We use irrational thinking, rules, shoulds, and oughts against us. We think ourselves out of happiness. We overgeneralize our situation, restrict our options, and worry about things that don't matter. In general, we care too much about what others think. From the point of Albert Ellis, we cause ourselves more difficulty than we get from others. If we are anxious, fearful, and worried about life, it's because of how we think, what we tell ourselves. We prefer not to experience being rejected by our parents, our friends, or our love interests. But the feeling of loneliness and worthlessness come from inside our heads. As children, we might have been constantly criticized, sexually abused, neglected, or forced to grow up in an alcoholic family. But Ellis maintains that the reason we suffer in adulthood, long after the initial trauma has gone, is because we tell ourselves that we are failures, worthless, unlovable, and helpless. We should not rely on our muspatory belief system. And yes, he knows it sounds like something else. He chose the word to get attention and to make the point that relying on absolutes, I must succeed, does not lead to healthy, mature relationships. Ellis accepts Roger's unconditional positive regard, particularly of self. Unconditional other acceptance is good, but unconditional self-acceptance is better. Ellis would say, don't be so mean to yourself. Accept yourself, even when you fail. Say that you failed, not that you're a failure. Say that you do stupid things, not that you're stupid.